Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? Oh my gosh, this week it's been crazy, crazy, crazy. I had told you guys my husband was going to go have cataract surgery, right? He was supposed to do this before he had that bypass surgery and everything got shuffled around. So he had it done this week, his left eye. And uh, I don't know, taking care of this man is a drain. <laughs> he drains all my energy, you know? He has to have eye drops put in his eye. I think there's four different, three different eye drops, three eye drops. No, three. Yeah, three eye drops four times a day. And I have to do it. You know, this morning uh, I woke up late and he had already put him in his eye. He's like, I did it. I'm like, good. Yay. Good for you. I'm glad you did it. And then he forgot his next one. I mean, I wasn't there. I didn't know what time he put it in his eye. And it was like one o'clock and I'm like, did you get your eye drops in again? And he's like, oh, I forgot about them. So, you know, he's just exhausting. You guys, it's exhausting taking care of him. It really is. He drains. I love him so much. And, you know, I'm so glad I'm able to take care of him, but he drains my energy. Uh, we got up and had his eye done on Tuesday, Wednesday, we had to go back to the doctor for the checkup. You know, they check the eye the next day. Oh my gosh, you guys, for the surgery, it was a nightmare. It was a, a total nightmare. We got there really early, you know. I'm telling you, they took him in the back. We got there an hour before the surgery, and they took him into the back. And I was waiting, you know, out front. Oh, I had I had a terrible day, y'all. That's why I, I I I just had so much stress about the whole thing. When I walked inside this surgical center, eye center, I walked in. There was a lot of people in there. We came in there was tons of people and you know they have like three rows of seat three rows three rows you know it's like here here and here there's three rows of seat they have little cubicles like that and uh they have them you know spaced out where you can't sit right next to a person it's like every other seat you can sit on so that there's some distance between everybody so everybody was kind of spaced out and we had to walk to the very, very back to find a seat. Well, I found a seat. There was a row of seats and they had, um, you know, don't sit here on every single seat, except for one of them was down on the seat. It wasn't stuck on there. So I, to me, I thought somebody must have just thrown that on that seat because it was three seats in a row. Nobody was sitting there. There was nobody to the other side. There were, and there was nobody on the back side of it either. Nobody was there. So I thought, well, that's a safe place to sit. There's, I'm not, I won't be close to anybody. It doesn't matter. Somebody must have just thrown that sign on there. Maybe it fell off the other chair and they threw it on there. Because why would they have three seats in a row you, you can't sit on? Well, there's a lady across from me when I sat down. She said, you can't sit there. And I said, well... I guess I'm just a rule breaker. I said, there's nobody here. There's three seats in a row. I'm not sitting next to anybody. I think it's okay. And I said, and this seat's open right here on the side, on the other side of me. I said, my husband can sit here. No, and we, we'll just sit here together. Nobody else will be around us. It says you can't sit there. She was, you know, <laughs> she didn't want me to. I said, is it going to bother you if I sit here? And she said, yes, it is. And I said, ma'am. There's a man right next to you, sitting right next to you. There's nobody next to me. There's a lady sitting directly behind you that y'all's heads are almost touching. There is nobody here close to me. And I looked at that man and I said, he was further away from me. He was closer to her. And I said, is it going to bother you if I sit here? And he said, he would not look at my face. He looked ahead and he goes, no. And I'm like, it's not bothering him if I sit in here. Why is it bothering you? <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll say whatever I got to say, you know, but I don't want to fight with somebody. I don't, I don't want to make her uncomfortable or fight with her. I just want people to understand. Use your common sense, people. Use your common sense. If there's nobody there, it doesn't matter. If there's a sign on the chair Somebody had obviously thrown it on there because it wasn't taped on the back. It was actually on the seat part and all the others were on the back. So to me, it looked like somebody had just thrown that one there. So my husband had gone straight to the bathroom, so he didn't see this at all. 
And he tells me, he, he tells me, what's wrong with you? You're, you fight with everybody. I don't fight with everybody, but he likes to say that. And he comes out of the bathroom and behind me on the other cubicle, there was one last cubicle. There was a couple sitting there and they had heard the exchange, which they were behind me. So I didn't know. But when I turned around to look at my husband, uh, when he came out of the restroom, the, this man pointed around like a L shape to, to the lounge. There was a table, a round table. And he pointed over there, like you can go sit over there. <laughs> so I got up and moved and went and sat at the table and it was right by the uh, TV and everything. So it was very comfortable and we could look at our phones and sit at a table. So it was really better place to sit, but people have some compassion, you know, and use your, just use common sense. If there's nobody sitting at three chairs in a row, it's obviously it's, it's okay. I wasn't sitting close to anybody at all. People were more than six feet across from me, more. <laughs> and so that started out the day really good. That, that, that began the day. They took my husband in the back. They took him back there. He was back there for three hours before they started the surgery. So evidently they overbooked, which evidently this is something they do all the time. So they overbooked. The nurses said, yeah, that's how it is here. So I guess when we go there to do the next eye, maybe I will leave and go somewhere and come back because that's a long time to wait. You know, I ended up going in the car because my phone was dying and go charging my car, uh, my phone in my car. So it was a really long day. We were we left an hour before because it's far away from our house. Got there an hour early. So I was out for like, we were out over almost six hours just for the surgery. You know, it's a long time. So we were exhausted when we got home. And then the next day we got up and we went and uh, had his eye checked. Everything was good. And that was really quick. But it was, again, it's far from our house. You know, it takes like 40 minutes driving 65 miles an hour. So it's a good ways away from our house, but everything was fine. And then we went and voted. Did you guys vote? We have our, our voting started um, in, on Tuesday. So we voted. Yay. And of course, I voted for Biden. And you know what they did in Texas now? You cannot just vote straight Democrat ticket. And every other time we voted, we could just vote Democrat. We didn't have to go through each single thing. But Abbott, in his wisdom, Governor Abbott, has said uh, we can only have one uh, mailbox, you know, voting, those voting boxes per county. Harris County is one of the biggest counties in the United States. So we have one mail ballot box for each county and you can't vote straight ticket anymore. So we had to go through each one, but that's fine. And you know what I did? I voted Democrat. And the ones that didn't have a Democrat in the race, I skipped it. I did not vote for any Republican at all. So I got it done. Okay. All right. Now I got that off my chest. Sorry, guys. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And that's how it is. There's a little bit of chit chat going on here right now. Uh, Biden is having a town hall tonight. I'm going to be watching that. And I'm so mad at NBC and MSNBC because they are putting on Trump's town hall at the very same time Biden is going to have this town hall. And Biden had already, you know, he'd already made this plan. He'd already planned it out. It's already been. And then all of a sudden MSNBC is doing Trump. They're doing him a big favor. And I thought they were, you know, totally against Trump all the time. It, it's so annoying. I'm so mad at them. You know what I did? I deleted all my timers for MSNBC. I deleted my Rachel Maddow, my Good Morning Joe, <laughs> and I deleted my the readout. That's the three of them that I watch on MSNBC. I don't really watch any M and, uh, NBC shows, and I deleted them all. Now I'll probably go back and watch them again, but I'm gonna I'm gonna you know stop for a few days and let that sink in. Hopefully they'll feel that. And I put it all over my Facebook and Twitter. Boycott MSNBC and NBC. Hopefully nobody's watching them. You guys don't watch them. We can always get the highlights from them, you know, because anything that he says stupid will be played a million times. So you don't have to watch it. Okay, guys. So um, I had the, uh, 
I had a, a couple of things that I wanted to tell you all about. There was a passing. Um, I think her name is Conchetta Farrell. She was an actress. The last thing I think she played on, she played on a lot of stuff, but she played in Two and a Half Men. She was that Berta, that waitress. It's so weird. About two weeks ago, my husband was watching Two and a Half Men. He was watching some old reruns of it. And uh, I don't I don't know why I said this. I said, Berta came on, you know, and I go, she died. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah, she died. She's dead. She died. He said, I didn't hear she died. And I said, yeah, she died. She did die. She's died. I don't know why I said that. I was just, I had this like knowing that she died. I just was sure that she died. Well, she had not died. She was in the hospital, but she was on a respirator. She was in really bad shape. I'm pretty sure that she had already, you know, crossed over. A lot of times when uh, you're unconscious, you've already crossed over. And I could just feel that she was already in spirit, you know. And then here we just got, um, I think it was yesterday, notification that she passed away. God bless her soul. So, the, but I, I thought she died two weeks ago. And then I came to my husband with my phone and I'm like, oh, guess what that Berta on Two and a Half Men, she, she just died today. <laughs> And he's like, you were wrong. And, uh, yes, I was. I was wrong. But God bless her. She was a funny lady. She's hilarious on that show. She really was. She was very sarcastic and smart alecky. And she only did whatever she wanted to on that show, right? She was funny. I loved her character on there. Okay. So what I'm going to take a look at today. Oh, you know what? I got to tell you on one other thing. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place here. I'm all excited. Finally got a little time to myself to make a uh, do a reading and talk to you guys. I miss y'all so much, but I feel like uh, I just don't have enough time in the day to do everything that I want to do. You know, this man's taking all my time. <laughs> I I had a meditation today, and when I started meditating, I had all these people coming through, uh, and it was people, you know, my people, uh, my grandmother, um, my aunt. Lots of people came through and they were hugging me, hugging me. And at the very end, like the end of the line, Farrah Fawcett was there. And I was like, Farrah Fawcett, I don't know you. It was so weird, y'all. It really, really was weird. I didn't expect it at all. And, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know why she's here, but I feel like there's some reason she's here. And I'm fixing to do a political reading. So is it politics? Could it be politics? So I started talking to her and let me tell y'all, she didn't have that long flowy hair that she's, you know, uh, renowned for. She had a shorter haircut and she had on uh, a t-shirt with the, like a flannel shirt over and some shorts. She looked real relaxed, real comfortable. Um, and I asked her, I, I said, okay, so what do you think of the politics that are going on? Because obviously she's here to give her opinion. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, and she says, well, looks like they're giving you a run for your money. And I said, well, if you were here and you could vote, who would you be supporting? Who would you be voting for? And you know what she does? She puts on a face mask and she looks at me with a face mask on. So I know she would vote for Biden. Uh, and so I asked her, were you always a Democrat? Did you always vote democratically? And she said, well, I didn't always vote. She said, I was very, very busy. Uh, I was, you know, I had a career. She says, I had a career and it, you know, it took all my time. And uh, she says, I guess at that point in her life that I'm thinking of when I remember her, you know, she said she she was flying from place to place. Uh, and I see a helicopter. I don't know why, but she's showing me like she would she traveled in a helicopter, too. So I don't know if it was. I don't know. That's what I'm I'm seeing. Um, I don't know if y'all can hear my dogs barking. My daughter has decided to go outside and play with the dogs and make them bark at this point. She doesn't know I'm doing a reading, though. Um, so I'm asking Farah, you know, I'm talking to her and I say, is there, 
Is there a reason, you know, for you coming through right now for today? Is there a special reason? Is there something that you want to say? And she says, yes, to all my fans. She says, all my fans, they're at that age where COVID could really cause a lot of problems. And I, I guess she's right. You know, I didn't think of it like that. So she was popular in the 70s and I think maybe early 80s. I don't know. Was it still going on? But for sure in the 70s, right? And she says, um, they're at that age where COVID can actually cause damage, a lot, a lot of damage, or it can kill you. And she just says, I want my fans, the people that supported me, the people, you know, that gave me so much love and all. She said, I want them to be safe. I want them to listen to the doctors and to the scientists. Listen to them. Okay. That's what she's saying. So she's sending, you know, she's sending her love to everybody. She just says, I love you so much. I want everybody to be safe and take care. And then um, I see her, she says to her family, you know, sending a lot of love to her family and to her fans. And then she says, and a big juicy kiss to Ryan. You guys know Ryan's almost 80 years old. Now. He's getting old. <laughs> We're all getting old. But it, that was so funny that she came through like that. It was so, it was just out of nowhere. It was just out of the blue. It was so weird. Okay, so the, let's get back to reading, okay? I'm going to read some cards. I do have some cards laid out. I, um, I'm ready to uh, read some cards for Trump. So I really want to take a look at Trump's health because uh, he sure got over that COVID quickly, you know? And I'm just thinking, is he really okay? All right, I paused it for a minute to see if my daughter could lighten up on the doggy. Whenever you throw the ball to my dog, she just goes crazy. She barks and she's just crazy. Okay, so anyway, I want to take a look at Trump's health. Is he really over this COVID? Is how's he doing? How's his health? And I, I just laid out the cards real quick here. So I pulled a few. It's a Knight of Wands. Um, so what happened was they caught the virus really quickly, you know, uh, before it replicated so much. And then he got that, uh, he got an intervention, you know, he got that cocktail of um, antibodies, you know, that n nobody else can really get. But he got that. And then he got that other thing too. And he does, you know, that, that intervention, that is what helped him because they're getting tested every day or every other day. They're getting tested so much that they can catch it really quickly. You know, when other people are getting sick, there's like, oh, well, you're not that sick. Come back when you're sicker. You don't need a ventilator. Go, you know, you know what I mean? If you're not that sick, you're not getting the kind of attention that he got or the medication that he's getting. You're, you can't get it. So this really did help him, you guys. It did. So that early intervention is what really helped him a lot. That's what I'm getting here. Next card is the sun card. And you know what this means? This means that he's feeling really, really good. Okay, so even we're thinking, oh, he doesn't really feel that good, does he? Yeah, he does. He really does feel good. <laughs> I hate to tell it to y'all, but he's feeling good. The next card is a good feeling card, too. Look, that's the Nine of Cups. So he's um, not only is he feeling good, he's feeling real smug about it, too. He's so proud of himself. All right. And the last card is the Emperor card. You know, even though he's feeling really, really good, he is an older guy, you know, and even though he, I'm sure it's the steroids and all that that's making him feel um, like Superman, like they were all talking about. But uh, the, all these rallies that he's doing right now, one after the other, he's such a fool, even though he knows that's the best way to spread COVID, he could care less. And him doing all these rallies, it's going to take a toll on him. You know what I mean? Because he's 74 years old, you know, and he's, he does, he has been sick. He has been ill. So um, because of him overdoing it, we may hear that um, he's being treated for exhaustion or something like that because, you know, he pushes himself. He doesn't, he doesn't listen to other people and he doesn't listen to his own body either. So we may hear that all of a sudden, you know, 
everybody's waiting for him to fall down. You know what I mean? So the, of course they're not going to tell us, Oh my God, he's in dire straits or he's sicker than a dog. They're not going to tell us that, but he may have to be, you know, treated again for exhaustion. You know what I mean? Let's, let's pull a few more cards on Trump. Let's see what's, what else is going on with him. Okay. <clears throat> you know, he's going to continue to do more and more rallies, more town halls, all these things. He's, it's like, he, like I said, he doesn't listen to his own body. He doesn't listen to the doctors. He didn't listen to anything. He just, he just go, he plows straight ahead. You know what I mean? He just takes on more and more and more and it, it'll have an effect on him. It won't be good. Uh, this is the eight of swords. Even though he's, you know, doing all these rallies and everything, it's like he's not able to reach out to the people outside of his base. You know, he's uh, he's just constrained to the base. He's not he's not uh, persuading anybody to vote for him. Basically, eight of ace of pentacles. Um, there's a lot of money being poured into his campaign, you know, and it's it's. It's still not going to help. It's not going to help. Even though all this money that they're pouring into his campaign and all the things they're doing, it's not going to help. The hanged man, uh, again, all this campaigning, all this money, all the things that they're doing, it's not having the effect that they hoped for. It's not changing any changing anybody's mind that was on the fence, you know, anybody that was like, maybe I'll vote for him. No, the people that voted for Trump the first time, you know, and now are like, um, I see the light. I wish I hadn't have done that. I'm so sorry for all the sparking, y'all. They're seeing him differently now. And, you know, they're not going to be inspired to vote for him again. Okay, that's what this this means. So not looking good for Trump as far as politically. I think, you know, as far as COVID, they got that under control, but I think there may be some other little issues coming up with him because, you know, he just, I don't know how many times they can't give him steroids, keep giving him steroids to make him feel better. They can't keep doing that, you know? So I feel like um, we may hear him having some other little issues, but of course they'll make it sound really, really small. Like, Oh, he's just tired. He needs to take, he needs to take a little rest, you know? So, all right. So have y'all been watching uh, the confirmation hearing with Amy Coney Barrett? Have y'all been watching that? I said she'd be confirmed, y'all. So I haven't really uh, looked at the cards again on him, on her because a long, you know, way back, y'all can go look, go look at the readings. I said she'd be confirmed that it's too good for the Republicans to pass up on. They won't pass it up. You know, they just won't. And, but I'm glad that in the hearings, what they're doing is they're pointing out, the Democrats are pointing out what a sham this is. Each one of them are pointing out what a sham this is. So, and I don't know how, I don't know how she can sit there straight face and listen to them and not even say anything in her own defense. Like, you know what I mean? So strange. And her poor kids have to sit there all day long, 12 hours a day. They're just sitting there listening to that. I don't know how they could stand it. Poor kids. And as far as the vaccine coming out, if you look back on my other readings, I had said that we would have a vaccine I got um, after Easter. So I'm going to stick with that. I still feel like that's when it would come out. It's in the spring after Easter. I feel like we'll have a vaccine out by then. Oh, did y'all hear about Kamala Harris? This is so weird. On my phone, it came across and I just saw, cause it flashes, you know, you see a flash come across your phone. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kamala Harris has COVID. <laughs> that's what that's how, what I saw on my phone, you know? And I go and tell my husband, Kamala Harris has COVID. Oh my gosh, she has COVID. She just had a debate with Pence. Oh my gosh, I wonder if she got it from Pence. 
And I'm just going on and on, you know. Come to find out, after I read the article, I clicked on it and read the article, and it's her um, staffers, you know, communications uh, director or something that has COVID. Also, I just heard a while ago, right before I turned on the camera, I heard that uh, somebody on Biden's plane had I, I haven't I haven't looked at it or read about read it or anything. My husband had the TV going on in the other room, and I went when I was coming in here. I heard that somebody on Biden's plane had COVID. It's getting close to home, y'all, real close to home. I hope they have that cocktail ready for uh, Kamala and Biden. <laughs> I hope they got it all ready for them. All right, so what I want to do is take a look at uh, Kamala. So I ought to look at Biden, too. Are they going to get COVID? No, I don't take a look at both of them. But I really wanted to take a look. I was going to look at Kamala and see how her health was. So tell me about Kamala's health. How's Kamala doing? All right, let's see. How's she doing? Okay, so the first card that I pulled for her is Three of Pentacles. You know, uh, they're watching her really closely. So this is good. They're testing her and taking care of her. This is, you know, um, the professionals, doctors and all that. So she's getting a lot of help with her health and to keep her healthy. Um, but, of course, look at this, that communications director. I bet she's, you know, been in very close contact with her. But they're really working hard to keep her healthy. So that's good. So even if she got sick, she would have the health care that she needs. She would have it. Um, five of Wands, you know, and this is about fighting off illness. So I don't know if she's actually has it and she's fighting it off or she's trying to make sure she doesn't get it, fighting it off, you know. But no matter what, she'll be okay. Even if she gets this illness, she's going to be okay. This this is successfully fighting it off. So like I said, so I'm not sure if she fights it off um, and she doesn't get it at all. Or if she just gets sick like Trump did, you know, and she fights the, the illness off and she's okay. So just know that because of this, this is... Uh, like I said, healthcare professionals working to keep her healthy. And if she's able to fight off the illness successfully, okay, if she does get it. The next card is King of Swords. So they're going to have some new rules in place because, you know, of them getting the COVID. So there's there. this is about structure and rules and everything. So there's going to be more contact tracing, more testing, a lot more structure put in place. So, you know, this doesn't happen in their campaign again, especially to keep Biden safe. You know, they really need to keep him safe. The last card I pulled is the Knight of Wands. This is just letting us know she's very strong, very vital. She has lots of energy and she's going to be OK no matter what, you guys. She'll be OK. She will be capable of, you know, fighting off this illness, even if she did get it. So don't worry about her. She's going to be all right. But I know we do want her on the campaign trail. We want her out there campaigning. But look what happens when you're out there campaigning, you get sick, you know, and that's what they've been doing. At first, they were like campaigning from the basement. They were making fun out of them. But uh, this COVID is out there, y'all. It really is. And you have to be careful. But I feel like she'll be OK no matter what. She's going to be all right. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at Biden real quick. It's going to be over 30 minutes. I'm sorry, y'all. I talked too much. I mean, let's take a look at Biden's health real quick. I hope I get this loaded up before um, long. It's, it's around 5 o'clock here, y'all. 
yesterday after I came home from uh, my husband's doctor, <laughs> I laid on the bed and slept for two hours after we voted and everything. We stopped. Um, we got some lunch. We got a burger for lunch. And then I just came home and crashed. I cannot believe I slept for two hours. That was a long nap. Okay, this is for Biden. What can I tell everybody about Biden's health? What's going on with Biden's health? What can everybody know about Biden's health? How's he going to do? Is he going to get COVID? Let's take a look at his health. See if we can take a look. Okay. Well, looks good, y'all. So far, so good. Yeah. He's getting good care. He's taking good care of himself. Wow, he got the same ending card of Kamala Harris. How weird is that? But he got better cards than her a little bit. The first card is uh, the Empress card. So... They are really taking good care of him. You know, you know, they really are. I would hope that they're taking care of Kamala Harris as well as they're taking care of. But, you know, he has his wife with him, too. And that may be a little bit extra. Not that men don't take good care of their wives. But, you know, women are a little bit better nurturers. And he's being well protected and taken care of. And maybe that, like I said, that extra care is his wife, making sure that, uh, He's, you know, not exposed to COVID. Page of Swords. Good news, y'all. I feel like the good news is, is that he won't get sick. That's good news. The next one is the Hierophant. Yeah, I think everything looks great. Like I said, he's being protected and taken care of. I don't think we have to worry about anything in the next card. Knight of Wands. Same card that Kamala ended with. He is strong. He does have lots of good energy and everything. And he's vital, strong, and he's going to be okay, too, just like she is, okay? He has to um, also, because of this card, it's a, there's so much energy here and everything. Uh, just like I said with Donald Trump, he has to worry also about overdoing it, you know? He could also, you know, overdo it. Uh, but he does have his wife watching over him, and probably she won't let him. But he has to watch out not to push himself so much and overdo things and get so exhausted you get run down, you know, your immune system gets low and then you're easily can get sick. So he's got to watch that. But it looks like he's got a lot of good energy here. I don't think Biden's going to be sick at all. Now, Kamala might possibly get sick because this looks like she might be fighting something off. My grandson, um, you know, he was tested for COVID and it turned out he didn't have it, but he had something and it was something kind of viral. It was a cold or something, a bad cold because he was sick for a good week with coughing and everything. Um, I don't know if it was the flu. I don't know why they wouldn't test him for the flu just to see what it was. Uh, they always get a flu shot every year. So I don't know. There's something that she'll fight off though. I'm not sure if it's COVID or not, but she'll be fighting off an illness. So, um, but everything's going to be fine. They look good guys. All right. Okay guys. So enjoy tonight's town hall with Biden and avoid the Trump one. <laughs> Don't watch that one, <laughs> please. All right, guys, if you're able to go vote early, go vote early, get it over with, get it done. That way, you know, if something happens on the day of the election and you can't make it there, you know, crap happens. You don't want to put it off to the last minute. There's some people that love to just go vote on, you know, November 3rd, but you don't want to, this is a really vital, important election. You don't want to put it off to the last day. If you can vote, go do it, okay? I encourage you guys. You guys stay safe. If you have to go out, wear your mask, you know, and stay six feet apart. Do whatever you got to do yeah. to stay safe, all right? Love you guys so much. Talk to you again really soon. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. If you'd like to get a reading with me, just look down below and contact me at my email address. Love you guys. Bye for now.